Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome, Chargers. We're glad to have you back again this week for another great guest. I'm telling you, we like bringing different guests with different viewpoints to be able to help you grow and learn and really make your business better each and every day. And the best part is, even if you're not in business, you will still get something from this podcast because Charge is about creating habits around real goals every day to really realize the dreams, aspirations, and the goals that you have that you can accomplish them each and every day. And today I'm excited to have our guest, Mark Mansing, is a senior HR compliance PEO and benefits consultant. Mark understands the challenges that come with running a small business. While getting a master's degree in leadership development, he started and ran a successful financial advisory firm for more than 10 years. Today, he works as an HCM business consultant for Paychex, where he has helped over 500 businesses navigate HR, compliance, and benefits, as well as streamlining and integrating their systems to save significant admin time, minimize risk, and scale quickly. Mark has been with Paychex for seven years, and his passion is problem solving and strategic planning to help business owners accomplish their goals. Mark is married with four children, not for the faint of heart. Mark, it is great to have you on the Charge Podcast. Welcome. Thank you, Gary, so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, you and I, you've come and done before for my mastermind groups on presentations and such practical information that I really wanted to share out to the podcast audience. And I appreciate you saying yes and being being agreeable to do this because I think the information you share, business owners need to know, but even if you don't own the business, you should know some of this information that Mark's going to share with us today. So I think that becomes the real key. But before we do that, Mark, you kind of shared a little bit in the bio of who you were but share with us your story and then ultimately how you got in this line of work. Sure, sure. So I, uh, I have a master's degree in leadership and I actually was in ministry. I worked at a church for eight years and then I had my own financial firm, um, which went really well until 2008 when the market crashed. And uh, I make jokes. If I would have had some of the services paychecks offered, I might still be in business, but now my colleagues still have other businesses not make. I made uh, didn't, left together, didn't really think through any of that. And, uh, a lot of that uh, contributed to, to fail. Uh, eventually, the business that was so successful for, for it. And so, uh, my yeah, my passion is just to help businesses things that they did not get into business, to about, but can really throw a wrench into their goals and plans. And so I, I love helping small businesses every day. Well, I appreciate that because that's the key is that, like you said, you've learned from kind of really yeah. some of your mistakes and you have such great insight of really being that consultant advisor to share with them some of those mistakes that really happened for yourself. I right. think where I'd like to really start today is, you know, with all the labor law changes and OSHA regulation changes, it's affected our business, especially now with the COVID disruption. Yeah. What would you tell business owners and people that's in business that they really need to watch out for? Sure. It's, it's a great question. And I, I see business owners are all, you know, going a million miles a second and all focused on, on revenue, understandably. Um, but a lot of times these things uh, that they're supposed to be doing, that they're required to be doing, get missed until something happens. And then it's very, very costly and painful. And so I, I highly recommend getting an HR and compliance assessment from a professional. This is what I do every day to go over those things and make sure you don't have such unnecessary risk and exposure and liability to your Fed ID um, that our small businesses don't have the margin for error that a lot of bigger businesses have. 
And so uh, there's just been a lot of changes like the, the labor law changes, like you have to get, you have to have a, a job description, a written job description with the ADA and new FSLA regulations. And it's actually a really good law change. It's really helped our businesses, but so many businesses don't even know that's there, much less are doing it. Um, the OSHA changes, all the COVID changes, you know, the PPP loan uh, forgivability has an OSHA requirement. And a lot of people have no idea of that. And I mean, hopefully nothing happens, but if something does happen, they could be in jeopardy of, of not having that forgiveness or violating uh, the PPP loan agreement. So that's just a couple of areas. Also with the employee handbook, there has been so many changes on what you have to communicate to employees and have them sign off on. It's kind of like a car insurance, right? I don't want to pay $10,000 if I hit a car out here and the government makes me carry it. The government makes you communicate these things to employees and it protects you and it protects them. But if you don't have those things in place, like the non-harassment and violence in the workplace and, and uh, all the different policies, attendance policies, benefit policies, there's so many things you have to spell out, have it, have it signed off on that just protects you from the gray area where there can be misunderstandings and can cause a lot of problems. And at the end of the day, whenever there's an issue with an employee, I always tell people, if you don't have everything lined up, buttoned up in writing, it's a he said, she said situation. And guess who loses every time it's a he said, she said. The employer. Every time. Yeah. So there's just, it's just wisdom and good business practice to do the things that the government requires you to do anyway, if you have W-2 employees. And there's a lot more we could go into, but I just want to make sure that that you know out there that your business, whether you own it or whether you're an employee, um, needs to know the all these changes because there's been a lot in 2021 uh, that uh, that they need to be aware of. Well, and the key is too is for a lot of business owners. Let's be honest: is they may have had that when they started, and they're using the same one they had 10, 15, 20 years ago, yep. and that same document is one being used, and the protection that you need is not in there. It's and- wildly, yeah, wildly out of compliant because there's you know. There's so many changes that happen now throughout, sometimes in the year, right? Even if you had a handbook updated and legal review for 1-1-2020 in March, it was outdated. And we're expecting new legislation this year. And so it, it's changes at such a rapid pace that there's plenty of things in that handbook, if it's a few years old or older, that should not be in there anymore. Uh, things like implied contracts, like a lot of people have verbal warning, written warning, suspension, termination, you know, a, some kind of a disciplinary policy. Well, that worked great until a couple of years ago when the handbook became the most subpoenaed document in the United States. And it still is today. All these sensitive people leaving their jobs, all these hungry young attorneys getting a hold of them. And they're nailing people on things like this because nobody follows it perfectly, right? You have a great employee you love, uh, having personal problems, going through a lot of stuff, missing time, you're going to work with them. Then you have an employee you need to shuffle on out the door and you you just don't handle them the same. And guess what the government caused that when you when you don't, when you uh, don't treat everybody exactly the same as the policy that you had in place. Discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. Same with real quick. One other, same with uh, performance reviews. I always ask people, do you do performance reviews? Yeah, kind of, you know, here and there and, and not regularly or just verbally or whatever. And uh, I had one person, they just do a, a, a raise. They don't even meet with them. They just do decide to do a raise or not. Um, but the problem is, is that guess when you're most, motivated to do a performance review on somebody when they're having problems when they're having problems and guess what the government calls it when you haven't done performance reviews regularly on everybody and you do one on someone that's having problems now you got me a little bit discrimination oh, it's discrimination, discrimination yeah. Yeah. yep yep so these are the sort of things that again our businesses have no idea it always blindsides them they never see this coming and they you know they just don't know what they don't know and these are really important things to be aware of as you run a business and, and have in place. And so that's my passion is to, at a minimum, educate our owners, which I do for free. I don't charge for that. And that they want help with some of these areas, we can help them, but we don't have to. There's no obligation. Uh, I just like to, I'm passionate to make sure our owners know of these things and are aware of them. Yeah, I think that's what's so valuable. As I said, you came in our group that I have and shared some information and really kind of opened the eyes of some of the business owners that realized that, man, they were in a liability issue. 
And, you know, the challenge is, like you said, if you're, there's a lawsuit, normally the business owner is going to lose every time. Let's yeah. move that to another area because for most business owners, especially small business owners, human resources, payroll is their number one expense, but right behind that is their benefits. Mm -hmm. And of course, for some of them, they can't afford to do benefits because they don't think they're able or capable of. But the other thing is there's people that can save money on benefits as a small business owner that they might not be aware of. How does you, how do you all work with companies like that? You know, benefits has been probably, if not the first, the second uh, thing that our owners have been talking to us about. It's become a huge topic because to be honest, our new workforce, they expect benefits. And, and our, our small, medium-sized businesses don't feel like they can compete and differentiate themselves, you know, and, and nowadays people aren't loyal, right? They just aren't. I wish they were, but they're not. And so we have people losing their top people, which is so devastating, you know, to, to other co bigger companies because of benefits. So it has been a huge topic that I talk a lot about with a lot of our businesses, because most of our businesses don't even know where to begin. And so I'll do, I'll talk a little bit about this. So when you first start out and you're like, man, I need to do something. Like, let's say you have a candidate that's like, I need benefits or I need help with benefits or something. So the first step is uh, you can contribute an amount to, a, to benefits. They can get individual plan uh, or whatever plan they want, uh, healthcare.gov, whatever. And you can contribute a uh, hundred bucks a month or 50 bucks a month or whatever. You set the amount. And you can do this through a program called QSERA through the IRS that allows them to be tax free. What you don't want to do is just give them another hundred bucks or whatever amount on their income because it's double tax. You pay payroll tax on it, they pay income tax on it, and it's not compliant anyway. But through a program called QSERA, you can contribute a set amount and you can tier it and say, if owners, I'm going to do 300, managers 200, employees 100, or whatever the number is. Um, so I, a lot of people don't even know that exists. And that's kind of the first step. The next step is group insurance. If you have two employees, you can get into a group and the, the group insurance, you know, you can, it, we're a broker or any broker, the ACA, even the playing field. So the rates are the same, no matter which broker you go to. Um, but a group plan could be the right fit as long as you can pay half of the lowest premium off. So for example, if you offer three plans, bronze, silver, gold, and you say, we're going to do this high deductible bronze plan with a $10,000 deductible, no co-pays, and it's $400 a month, and we're going to contribute $200 a month. If you want to buy up to the silver plan, uh, lower deductible and co-pays, or the bron or this gold plan, uh, even lower deductible, lower co-pays, you can pay the difference, right? So if the, if the silver plan is 600, you can pay 200, and, and then they can buy, they, they pay 400. And then you can also pay the difference if you add spouse, kids, so that's the second thing. But the, but the biggest way, the two biggest ways I've seen uh, to save businesses, and most of my business owners have, don't even know either one of these options. They're just going in, getting a PEO go, or a PPO and going to a broker. But the, the two biggest ways I've seen to save our small businesses money and be cost effective, one is called a PEO and it's co-employment. So it's your Fed ID for workplace management. It's our Fed ID for benefits and for HR compliance and work comp and SUI, so state employment insurance. So what that does is it allows us with our Fed ID to pool you with hundreds of thousands of others and negotiate directly with the carrier. And so it allows you to compete with these larger employers and even sometimes better than what the larger employers are offering. And so that has been a huge savings for, for our small business to be able to do that and offer, you know, Fortune 500 benefits uh, for a much lower cost because they're pooled with hundreds of thousands of others. So for the right fit, that has been a significant savings and it differentiates you from all of your competition by being able to offer Fortune 500 benefits uh, in comparison to whatever everybody else is offering. The second thing is called level funded. And what it is, is the insurance company determines based on your, your, your group, your census, what they think your claims will be, 100% of whatever their claims would be for the year, they predict it, and then they add another 20%, and they divide that by 12, and that's your premium. Now, what happens is if you don't use all the claims they predicted you would use, 
you get up to 50% of what you paid in back credited for the next year, which is incredible, right? So you have more control of your insurance costs. Now, if you use all of your claims and more, you don't pay any more. You just pay that set amount, but they may raise your rates the next year, right? And you can look at other options. Um, but those are the two, the brokers don't want the premiums to go down because they get a commission on the premium. So a lot of times they don't offer those level funded plans because they are less expensive. And so those are the two areas that I've seen. We've saved businesses quite a bit of money on benefits, improved their benefits, uh, lessened their cost. It's, it's been really significant help for them. Well, and I think that's huge because for a lot of small businesses, they're not offering benefits. So they don't even get the chance at some of them employees. And now exactly. what you're talking about, not only if they do have it, how they could really group themselves together to get the benefits of, you know, a larger group um, yep. that you're talking about. And that's all things that you can break down and realizing. And what part of this is, is being educated. And that's why you're listening to the podcast. What some of those opportunities that's there available for you. And I think another area that you and I talked about that we wanted to discuss is some ways that they can actually save on taxes for small businesses that they might not be aware of, because of course, then this helps back to that benefits to be able to provide some of those benefits because why pay unwanted taxes? You don't need to. What are some areas that they can look at in that area? Every single business owner I meet with is pay paying too much in taxes. And most of them in the back of their mind know it, but they don't know what to do about it. Right. right. Um, you know, to give you an example. The SECURE Act was passed last year in January, but then everybody forgot about it because obviously a pandemic. Right. And I, when I talk to people, some of them have heard of the SECURE Act, but they don't even know how it's affected them. But it has been a huge, huge boost uh, to our small businesses. And it's, it's just a travesty that they don't know about this and how it affects them. So I'll give you a little background on this. This is all that this has to do with retirement, with 401ks. So in the old days, 401ks were too expensive and, and too much administration for smaller companies. So they didn't offer. And but there's been a lot of changes in regard to that over the years. And I'm not on top of that, people are not saving at all. They just aren't. You know, in the 2037, Social Security is supposed to be bankrupt. They don't do something about it. So the government has been incentivizing and the states have been incentivizing uh, to offer 401ks for small businesses as well as large businesses to offer it. And so what they did originally was they did $500 tax credit per year for three years uh, to offer it, even if nobody takes it for small businesses. Well, the, so then what happened was as of 2021, 12 states now have mandated you have to offer a retirement plan if you have five or more employees or whatever number of employees. And so the government with the SECURE Act, they raised that tax credit. We, we couldn't believe this. We never saw this coming from 500 per year for three years to up to 5,000 per year for three years. Wow. And it has been a game changer. We're talking about 15,000 and actually, depending on how you set it up, it can be up to 16,500 in tax credits just for offering retirement, even if nobody takes it. And here's the key too, you don't have to contribute to it. You can just say you can put your money away. You don't have to match. So very little cost to the employer to be able to have a huge, huge savings uh, in tax credits, it, it's been a no-brainer. The second thing that's been significant when it comes to taxes uh, and retirement has been that it used to be you just had the option of traditional 401k, and it could not be heavy on the owners, meaning if your employees were only putting in a couple thousand a year or whatever amount, that's all you could put in. And our, and our owners were frustrated with their small businesses because they need more of a tax break. And why am I going to pay and provide this benefit when I can't really use it? So when Safe Harbor came about, it now allows you to put up to, if you're under 50, 57,000 into your retirement as a business owner and 63,000 if you're over 50. And so this has been a game changer for our businesses. Literally, if you have 30,000 too much taxable income, you can put it in your retirement and eliminate the tax bill. So you have more control over your taxes than you realize um, with this SECURE Act passing and with Safe Harbor. But most of my small business owners are not aware of this at all. And they're just paying too dang much in taxes, which is really frustrating for our small business. They are the backbone of our country. 
and they need all the breaks they can get, right? Uh, especially nowadays with a pandemic. So this has been something I've been very passionate about, uh, making sure they get the savings they need in regards to that. Well, just look at the savings. What we're trying to do is show you that there's other ways to do things than the way that you may be doing them now. So I hope you're hearing that there's an opportunity for you here to relook at things, actually save some money that's not gonna cost you money to allow you now to offer better benefits and you're gonna be getting a benefit as a business owner. I'll be honest, that safe harbor is one, I had that challenge and I had the retail wireless business. My staff never put enough in. We didn't do a match, but even then they weren't putting enough in and I didn't get the max mine out. And I didn't right. like that because I wanted the max mine out because I want that money for retirement. And we ended up changing over to a safe harbor because then I was able to do that. And that retirement comes so quick. So business owners, I hope you're hearing there's some opportunities for you as you move forward. And we'll share at the end how you can reach out to Mark. It's a no obligation um, commitment. So the thing is, you can really figure out how does this work for me? And will it work for you? Mm -hmm. One of the other key things become and we talked about with the admin staff, and how to try to really take the manual entry to streamlining and integrating your vendors and your services together. And I know with your all system, you allow that to happen. How does that really help a small business owner reduce some of those entries that they're doing now and time savings? Yeah, our small and medium-sized business, everybody's wearing 15 hats, right? They're all doing a lot and overwhelmed. And one of the areas I've seen where there's just way too much admin time and manual entry is you have all these different vendors and you're having to manage all these different systems. And so, for example, I had a baby a, a year ago, which people say congratulations till they find out it's my fourth. <laughs> and then they find out I just turned 51 and they just think I'm crazy. Uh, but, you know, if I if I work for you and I, you know, let you know that I that I had a baby, you have to go into the broker system and change it there. You have to go in the payroll system and change it there. And then maybe you have your own um, you know, internal system. Right. And so. It, it, I, what I did was I just added the baby onto my phone app, the same phone app that I can see my check stubs. I can manage my retirement. I can enroll in my benefits, manage my benefits. I just added the baby and it, it just communicated with all the systems. It was one sign in one system. Same with retirement. I can, you know, I can enroll in my retirement. I can manage my retirement all through the same phone app. There are very few vendors out there that can integrate everything. And, it, you know, even I see a a lot of need to do job costing and labor distribution and they're doing it by hand. It's a nightmare. Literally the person can clock in and out to the job, to the task, and it can go into the payroll and all the way into the general ledger. So whether it's tracking time, whether it's benefits, whether it's, uh, you know, performance reviews or whatever you're tracking or, you know, even onboarding, you know, I see people still doing paper onboarding. This new, this new workforce, if you're doing paper, they're, they're, you don't want them thinking the first day, what did I do getting with this archaic company that's so behind? And, you know, if you can't do it by phone, they're not interested. And so now you can just send an email. They'll fill all their stuff out online, their I-9, their W-4, their direct deposit, very user-friendly, and uh, it just goes directly to the payroll. So there are ways to do integration, have all of the, everything be one sign-in, one login, all the way from onboarding to the general ledger and everything in between. But a lot of our folks, you don't know what you don't know, and you're just continuing to scramble and juggle these different vendors and manage these different systems. And it's very inefficient. And you could free up, I always say, you need to free up more time for revenue generating activity, because That's all right. of that is not revenue generating activity. Yeah. And then save yourself some money along the way that we've right. been talking about. Yep. Mark, we're coming up on that time before we jump to the recharge round. But I guess if I was listening to this and I've got interested as a business owner, one of the questions I'd be asking myself is, what's the most cost-effective way to get help in maybe one of the areas that you sp spoke of, or maybe even in multiple of those areas? So I do a free consultation. I get a salary. So I, I'll meet with any of you and do a consultation for you on any of this stuff. And there's no obligation and no cost to it. So at a minimum, that's the most cost-effective cost effective way is free. 
And, and then if you do want help in any of these areas, um, I've not seen it any cheaper. You know, we, we, if you need HR and compliance help, we have 600 HR and compliance uh, uh, consultants across the country. And um, they, you know, we keep the cost down because you share them with 50 other people because you don't need them sitting in your office. You just need their expertise, like you need an accountant, like you need an attorney uh, to help you. So uh, happy to help. Uh, obviously, if you have it, have help free from somebody, that's even better. But at a minimum, I'm happy to provide that information for free. And then lastly, um, we're giving a 40% discount to anybody that comes through Gary and through this podcast on anything you would need. They're letting us do this due to, you know, Gary's relationship with me and also due to the COVID disruption where people need this help more than ever, but they're financially disrupted. So this is the best time to cost effective wise to be looking at a lot of these things. And again, there is no obligation and no cost to just have an assessment, pick my brain for you guys personally and what you need for your, your businesses and what questions you have. Also, I'm helping a lot of people with the PPP and then the new, the new stimulus uh, bill that passed where there's a whole, set of, uh, whole separate set of money just for 20 and under empl employers. So there's a lot of things, again, that people just don't know about and aren't taking advantage of that I'm happy to help you with. Share with them how they could reach out to you if they want to sure. schedule that free HR compliance benefit assessment with you. There. Yeah. Call or text me at 913-603-7930. That's 913-603-7930. Or email me at M for Mark. And then my last name is M A N. S I N G H. It's Man Sing and then H. So M Man Sing H at Paychex, P A Y C H E X dot com. And what we'll do is have that all in show notes for you too. So if you are running on that treadmill right now, or if you're driving, we hope you didn't try to write it as you're driving because that would be dangerous. We will have all that in show notes at chargepodcast.com. So know that you can go there. All the links will be right there for you to be able to pick up the information. But check that out because the thing I wanted to have Mark on is it's to let you think about ways that you could actually save money and actually, really what you said, Mark, spend your time on revenue producing activities. Yep. And don't think Mark's talking about the large businesses. They work with the small businesses. You can have two, five, 10, 15, yep. 50, whatever that number is. But they're in the business really of the small businesses because guess what? The large businesses all have that in-house and they have yep. those people but you don't have that capability that you have. And that's why I really wanted to bring him on and share his expertise. And he has a nice little document that he'd be glad to share you. Take a minute to help protect your business. Basically it's that one minute HR compliance survey that he'll share with you if re you reach out to him that you can kind of think, um, think about. So lots of great information, Mark. I truly appreciate you sharing that with our audience today. Now, you're not off the hook though, because I've got three <laughs> questions that I ask every guest called the recharge round. And the first one is, you know, the name of this podcast is charge. Well, that's a mantra that I have of create habits around real goals every day. What habit do you think has led to success in your life? There's no question about it. Prayer. Mm. Prayer has led to the most success I've ever had. Here's the deal is I don't have control over or a lot of results. I don't have control of circumstances. I don't have control of a pandemic that's coming but I know who does. And so it just allows me to give it to God, get a peace knowing God's in control no matter what, and just hand it to him. Uh, so many times I've tried to do it on my own and try to figure it out myself. And I keep coming, at, coming back to give it to God, give it to him, pray, ask him to work, ask him to work in spite of the circumstances or in the circumstances. Uh, he will provide, he will lead, he will guide. There's nothing better in my life than praying to lead to success. Well, thank you for sharing that. How about one simple positive action you take each day to help you move forward to achieve your goals? Yes. And, you know, being a man of faith, I believe God desperately wants a relationship with us and wants to speak to us every day. And it's just a matter of if we're, if we're going to listen, right? Okay. If we're going to take time to listen, so I, uh, I used to want to read my Bible and get to it here and there. 
And, and then I wondered, you know, I always tell people I don't have time and I have time. And then somebody said, yes, you do. You watch the chiefs game. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute now. <laughs> but I got challenged to, to really be in the word every day. And so yes, reading the Bible every day, God speaks to me he, in whatever circumstances I'm in the, the spirit speaks and it has just been so fruitful such a blessing um, just to get commune with God every morning to start my day. Thank you. How about your biggest life lesson? What did you learn from it? So my biggest life lesson is um, I went through my, my company went under and my marriage failed and I was in a really, really hard time in my life. And I was in a deep depression and I did what a lot of people do. I just grin and bared it and just, you know, just toughed it out. Um, severely depressed. And I had at the time, I had a friend and his wife. And at the same time, this was going on with me. They were told that their baby, their first baby was going to die once it was born. And so there's no way it was to be able to live outside the womb. And so they made the decision to take it full term, which I thought was crazy. And I remember watching this and they would, they would pray and they had a peace and they would take up, go on trips and take uh, little uh, uh, Lucas to, you know, different areas and whatever. And people were praying for him the whole time. They had this piece of joint. They had a blog, the caring bridge. They had all kinds of things going on and a lot of support. And then eventually the baby was born the baby died. And I remember, remember going to the funeral. And when I got to the funeral, there were 500 people there and they got up and they were sharing all the things that God did, the prayers they answered. Like for example, the baby was supposed to not be able to survive once the umbilical cord was cut. And they were praying, can, praying that the baby would survive long enough to get pictures, do the little, the little feet molding thing and, and things like hold them. And, and he did. He miraculously lived a few hours. And so they just shared the peace they had. And then when it was all over, they said, OK, if you want to bring a meal to them, you know, go sign up over here in the corner. And so I went over there to sign up and I said, yeah, I can bring a meal next week. And, and the lady said, um, no, April. And I said, April, this was in January. I said, April, no, I want to bring a meal next week. She's like, no, we have so many people signed up for the first available is in April. And I went, you are kidding me. And I, I looked at this and I said, this is what it looks like to go through a trauma with God. And what I was doing was going through trauma without God, just grin and bearing it. I had a faith, but I wasn't depending on God. And, and that moment on, I changed my perspective and said, I am always going to go with God and invite God into the pain, into the suffering, into the trouble. So if you're going through trouble right now or pandemic and things are really bad, I just really encourage you to go with God because you're going to go through it anyway. And I just encourage you to go through it with God because it will always be better. What a great message and what a great story. And they impacted others like yourself mm -hmm. that you know, be quite honest, was not the intention at the time, but think right. of the impact. And that's the influence we have on people, Chargers, each and every day. You hear me say every time, make it a great day. We choose what we want it to be each and every day. And you may be struggling right now, right? That Mark mm -hmm. talked about. Find time to spend some of that spiritual time with God, whatever it is for you, and spend that time there. And I love the philosophy you said, with God instead of without him. And just think about our world and our country. How much better off would we be if we would be with God in that part of it? So, and God Mark, doesn't waste. God doesn't waste the suffering. He uses it. And you could be the answer to prayer that someone was looking for because that that transformed my life. Uh, their suffering and the way they handled it, uh, leaning on God. Yeah, Mark, I can't thank you enough for saying yes to the Charge Podcast. It was great to have you on, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Chargers, we covered a lot of ground here. If you're a small business owner, there was lots of information. So I'd tell you, go back and listen to it. But the other thing I want you to do is, you know, a small business owner that needs to hear this message because they've told you that they're struggling, that the pandemic has affected their business, whatever it is, share this message with them because what they can find out is there may be ways that they could change some things that they're doing in their business to actually save them money or to be able to offer more to find those top notch um, candidates that they need to have for their business. So remember, check out how you reach uh, Mark. All of his information is on chargepodcast.com. His email, the phone number he shared with you will all be there. So please check that out and make your business be even stronger as we continue in 2021 and get moving into 2022. 
Chargers, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. Remember, go out each and every day and make it a great day. See you next week. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.